Today, we'll be using B-Side NG to automate Wi-Fi hacking and crack a WPA password on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Although WPA2 is the common standard for Wi-Fi encryption, it's actually very easy to crack using tools like Aircrack NG and B-Side NG. And today we're going to be doing that using a Wi-Fi adapter as well as a Kali Linux computer. If you're not sure if your adapter is going to be compatible with Kali Linux, be sure to check the links in the description below. And also please be advised, when you do use B-Side NG, you do need to set it to target a network because if you just spin it up, it will attack everything around you and that's illegal. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to specify which directory we want to save to. And that's just because it's going to make things a lot neater overall. So we're going to do uh, cd tilde forward slash desktop. Bam, there we go. And then the next thing that we're going to do is uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, I did not plug in our antenna and we're going to be using the PAU07 Panda wireless antenna for this tutorial. Um, there's lots of other ones you can use and you can always just check um, links in the description for other articles about which would be the best option for you. So we're going to be doing ifconfig and we're just going to be taking a look at the different interfaces that we have available to us. And we see we have here WLAN0. That is the uh, internal wireless adapter. And now I'm going to go ahead and plug in our external adapter. And uh, let's see if I can run it again and see if it shows up. All right, let's use iwconfig. And that's going to let us just look at all the wireless interfaces we have available to us. OK, here we go. We have WLAN 1. And as we can see, it is turned off. Um, if even, you know, uh, more contemporary, you can use PA, and we have WLAN1 here. We can see it's currently uh, the state's down, which is also being turned off. So what we need to do now that we have it plugged in is we need to put it into monitor mode. And what we're going to do is use airmon-ng. And this is another tool in the uh, aircrack ng suite. And what it does is it just puts our antenna into monitor mode. And uh, our antenna, as um, it's capable of doing uh, packet injection and being put into monitor mode, which is the reason that we're using it. So make sure um, before you start uh, that your antenna is capable of doing both. Again, consult those articles. And we're gonna use Airmon NG start. That just means um, we're starting whatever interface we're gonna use. WLAN one. There we go. And we can even, if we want to, check again, try to run the command again. Oh, it says the device is not there anymore. It doesn't exist. It's just vanished. Actually, the name's changed. And um, if you do WLAN1 mon, see it's done there. We can even go back to iwconfig, and now we can see it's been renamed WLAN1 mon. So we know that's been put into monitor mode. And so now that we've done that, uh, we're going to get to pick our target. And I've already set up a target for us today. Um, it's going to be a mobile hotspot that is connected to a computer that's running a YouTube video in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and find it, uh, looking at the network traffic around us with arrow dump dash ng, which is another tool that we have available to us from the Aircrack ng suite. We're going to specify which interface we're using, which is going to be WLAN1MON. Okay, and as you can see, our antenna is starting to sniff around and show us all of the different networks that are around us. And we can see different things like uh, we can see their BSSID, and we can see uh, you know, what channel they're on. And uh, we can also see here uh, the data. And this is uh, relevant to us today because uh, we need to know whether or not there is a client on the network. And the reason for that is because when you want to capture a handshake, a handshake is basically the secret exchange between a network and a device when it connects. And this happens when it connects, so you need to be able to uh, see that handshake as it happens. So that's what BSS, uh, sorry, that's what B-Side NG does, which is the, which is the tool that we're using today. And so I just, yeah, I let this run for a little bit and we can see that there's data going on these other networks, but uh, the one of interest is target one. We can see that it has a little bit of data going through and let's see, it's running. All right, so there's a little bit of data going through, but uh, that's enough to tell us that there's a client on it and that's all we need to know. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this from running and I'm gonna grab the BSS ID of this network. And the reason for this is um, when we run B side NG, we are able to specify a target, which is important for this tutorial because we want to make sure that we're just targeting one network and not all of the networks around us, which B-Side NG will uh, by default attack everything. So it's important that we do this step. 
and that it never be skipped. And then moving on, now that we have our target network, we're going to try and see if we can listen in on the secret exchange between the network and the client and see if we can capture this handshake. So for running B side NG, we're gonna go ahead and put in B side NG, and then we're gonna specify the target. We can do this by putting dash B, which is for uh, BSS ID. We're gonna paste target there, and then we're gonna specify which interface we're using, which is WLAN 1 MON, our antenna that's been put into monitor mode, and let's go. Okay, so we can see that it's scanning through all the different channels, and now that it's um, locked onto the target it was looking for, it is sending DAUTH packets to both the network, uh, the cellular phone that's uh, uh, broadcasting the mobile hotspot, and the client computer that's connecting to it for interwebs, and it's telling both of them to disconnect. Oh, and there you go. So we've already owned the targets, which means that um, in the um, interim, while it was uh, telling the two devices to disconnect from one another in their attempts to reconnect, it was also listening in on their attempts and captured a handshake. And that gets automatically saved for you. Um, and since we specified that we're gonna be saving to the desktop at the very beginning, uh, that's gonna save us the trouble of it ending up anywhere else. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and try to crack this password open. So the way that we do that is uh, the handshake is basically a hashed um, mashup of both the password and the network name and a couple of other details. It um, you know puts it through an algorithm and gives us a nice hash that we can use to check whether or not it's the correct password. And we do this by checking it against a password list that has you know any number of passwords. I'm going to be using a pretty popular one. Um, it's probably a little bit dated. Um, but it's not going to matter because I had set this up with a pretty easy password to begin with, just to show you guys. So we're going to do aircrack ng, for which the suite is named after. And we're going to put in the word list that we're using, which is going to be rocku.txt. Oh, and I also did forget to specify. Actually, no, it doesn't matter. I can show you uh, if we don't put it in. I'm just put in WPA. Dot cap, which is the capture file that has the handshake in it. All right, so we found out the password and uh, that's it. Obviously, you know, if it is a more complicated password, it's gonna be a lot more difficult for you to guess. And it is statistical because these are just, you know, password lists, it's full of, you know, tons of unique singular passwords. So the only way you can really make a really robust crack method is to have a very robust, big, password list. And then again, you know, if you have any number of mixed letters, characters, it's going to make it a lot more difficult, um, both for your own safety and, you know, making this a real pain in the butt to try to do. So uh, that's all we have for today. And thank you for watching. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website, where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP Zap, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst prep course. Check out the link in the description below. And that's it. That's how you're going to use B-Side NG to crack a WPA password. And just remember, whenever you are attacking a network, make sure it is one that you have permission to attack because doing otherwise would be illegal. Thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like some more information, be sure to check out the link in the description and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.